Come have a seat in the Skald Circle and hear the tale of Prometheus the Firebringer, as told by Casimir. Before we begin our tale, did you know that we release new stories for free every week on Wednesdays? Be certain to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, Spotify, Podbean, or whatever your favorite podcast app is. That way, you'll never miss out when we release free bonus stories other days of the week. Never forget, visit theskullcircle.com to stay up to date with all of our current happenings, and also to visit our story archive, sorted by origin and region. Now then, this begins the tale of Prometheus the Firebringer. By now, all was ready for the appearance of mankind. Even the places the good and bad should go after death had been arranged. It was time for man to be created. There is more than one account of how that came to pass. Some say it was delegated by the gods to Prometheus, the titan who had sided with Zeus in the War of the Titans, and to his brother, Epimetheus. Prometheus, whose name means forethought, was very wise, wiser even than the gods. But Epimetheus, which means afterthought, was a scatterbrained person who invariably followed his first impulse and then changed his mind. So he did in this case. Before making men, he gave the best gift to the animals, strength and swiftness, and courage and shrewd cunning, fur and feathers and wings and shells and the like, until no good was left for me, no protective covering, and no quality to make them a match for the beasts. Too late, as always, he was sorry, and asked his brother's help. Prometheus then took over the task of creation, and thought out how to make mankind superior. He fashioned them in a nobler shape than the animals, upright like the gods, and then he went to heaven, to the sun where he lit a torch and brought down a fire, a protection to men, far better than anything else, whether fur or feathers or strength or swiftness. And now, though feeble and short-lived, mankind has flaming fire, and therefrom learns many crafts. For a long time, certainly throughout the happy golden age, only men were upon the earth. There were no women. Zeus created these later, in his anger at Prometheus for caring so much for men. Prometheus had not only stolen fire from men, he'd also arranged that they should get the best part of any animal sacrificed, and the gods the worst. He cut up a great ox, and wrapped the good eatable parts in hide, disguising them further by piling entrails on top. Besides this heap, he put another of all the bones, dressed with cunning and covered with shining fat, and bade Zeus choose between them. Zeus took the white fat and was angry when he saw the bones craftily tricked out. But he had made his choice, and he had to abide by it. Thereafter, only the fat and bones were burned to the gods upon their altars. Men kept the good meat for themselves. But the father of men and gods was not one to put up with this sort of treatment. He swore to be revenged on mankind first, and then on mankind's friend. He made a great evil for men, a sweet, lovely-looking thing to look upon in the likeness of a shy maiden. And all the gods gave her gifts, silvery raiment, a broidered veil, a wonder to behold, and bright garlands of blooming flowers and a crown of gold. Great beauty shone out from it. Because of what they gave her, they called her Pandora, which means the gift of all. When this beautiful disaster had been made, Zeus brought her out, and wonder took hold of the gods and men when they beheld her. From her, the first woman, comes the race of women, who are an evil to men with the nature to do evil. Another story about Pandora is that the source of all misfortune was not her wicked nature, but her curiosity. The gods presented her with a box, into which each had put something harmful and forbade her from ever opening it. Then they sent her to Epimetheus, who took her gladly, although Prometheus had warned him to never accept anything from Zeus. He took her, and afterward, when that dangerous thing, a woman, was his, he understood how good his brother's advice had been. For Pandora, like all women, was possessed with a lively curiosity. She had to know what was in the box. One day, she lifted the lid, and out flew plagues innumerable, sorrow, and mischief for mankind. In terror, Pandora clapped the lid down, but too late. One good thing, however, was there. Hope. It was the only good the casket had held among the many evils, and it remains to this day mankind's sole comfort in misfortune. So mortals learned that it's not possible to get the better of Zeus 
or ever deceive him. The wise and compassionate Prometheus, too, found that out. When Zeus had punished men by giving them women, he turned his attention to Prometheus himself. The new ruler of the gods owed Prometheus much for helping him conquer the other titans, but he forgot his debt. Zeus had his servants, force and violence, seize him and take him to Caucasus, where they bound him to high-piercing, headlong rock in adamantine chains that none can break. They told him forever shall the intolerable present grind you down. And he who will release you is not born. Such fruit you reap from your man-loving ways. A god yourself you did not dread God's anger, but gave to mortals honor no know their due. And therefore you must guard this joyless rock. No rest, no sleep, no moment's respite. Groans shall be your speech, lamentation your only words. The reason for inflicting this torture was not only to punish Prometheus, but also to force him to disclose a secret very important to the Lord of Olympus. Zeus knew that fate, which brings all things to pass, had decreed that a son should one day be born to him, who would dethrone him and drive the gods from their home in heaven. But only Prometheus knew who would be the mother of this son. As he lay bound upon the rock in agony, Zeus sent his messenger Hermes to bid him disclose the secret. Prometheus told him, Go and persuade the sea wave not to break. You will persuade me no more easily. Hermes warned him that if he persisted in stubborn silence, he should suffer still more terrible things. An eagle red with blood shall come, a guest unbidden to your banquet. A day long he will tear to rags your body, feasting in fury on the blackened liver. But nothing, no threat, no torture, could break Prometheus. His body was bound, but his spirit was free. He refused to submit to cruelty and tyranny. He knew he had served Zeus well, and that he had done right to pity mortals in their helplessness. His suffering was utterly unjust, and he would not give in to brutal power no matter at what cost. He told Hermes, there is no force which can compel my speech. So let Zeus hurl his blazing bolts, and with the white wings of the snow, and with the thunder and the earthquake, confound the reeling earth. None of all this will bend my will. Hermes crying out, Why, these are the ravings you may hear from a madman, left to suffer what he must. Generations later, we know he was released, but why and how is not clearly told anywhere. There's a strange story that the centaur, Chiron, though immortal, was willing to die for him, that he was allowed to do so. When Hermes was urging Prometheus to give in to Zeus, he spoke of this, in such a way as to make it seem an incredible sacrifice. Look for no ending to this agony until a god will freely suffer for you, and will take upon him your pain, and in your stead descend to where the sun is turned to darkness, the black depths of death. But when Chiron did this, Zeus seemed to have accepted him as a substitute. We are told, too, that Hercules slew the eagle and delivered Prometheus from his bonds, and that Zeus was willing to have done this. But why Zeus changed his mind and whether Prometheus revealed the secret when he was freed, we do not know. One thing, however, is certain. In whatever way, the two were reconciled. It was not Prometheus who yielded. His name had stood through the centuries, from Greek days to our own as that of the great rebel against injustice and authority of power. And that is the tale of Prometheus the Firebringer. Thank you for listening to our story. If you enjoyed it, please take a look at our Patreon page to learn how you can earn great rewards while also supporting us. We appreciate even the smallest of contributions, as they allow us to continue to release new stories every week for free on Wednesdays, and also provide bonus stories for your listening pleasure. Visit us at theskullcircle.com to view our story archive, sorted by origin and region, and to stay up to date with all of our current developments. Once again, thank you for listening to our story.